do some sashing and narrow borders. So I know lots of you don't have rulers, so I'm going to actually draw these in, mark them in for you so that you can see. So we're going to start off, I'm going to rule in. I started off with one here, so now it's about a quarter of an inch, two and three. On the, To start off we'll not get five. I, I really want f as near to five as I can get. But coming this way we start at the top here and we're taking our quarter inch. And normally I would, because I would do it with a ruler it would come out really even but I'm just trying to make it so that it everybody can have a go at this. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five. We've gone that way. So we're now going to go this way. So we'll have one this way and I will take this one out up to here and put this one in just so that I can see where we're going with it. Two, three, four and five. And we keep going like this to the end. Try and keeping it as even as possible. Not always possible, I don't think. So one there, one there. And again, one there and there, one there and again, as you can see some of mine are not as evenly spaced as they could be but I just want you to get the idea of how this goes together. You will space it out much better than this on the fabric. So one there and again. And last ones. this one I thought we would do feathers. I need to try and do these feathers upside down for you but I don't know if I'm going to be very good at it. We need to come from the middle. We need to do half a bird's wing around the sun and to the middle. Half a bird's wing around the sun and back to the middle. And we need to keep doing this. Half a bird's wing around the sun and back down. So take your time, draw them in if you can. Remember that nothing has to be perfect. Half a bird's wing around the sun and down. See I'm doing it upside down has made it to, to me look awkward but I'm sure it looks correct for yourselves. I was taught that it was half a bird's wing and around the sun and it's always stuck with me. So for a narrow border that is quite sufficient and you would take, you would run your threads all the way down the centre to the bottom at the end. And the last one we're going to do is the figure eight. And you can mark a sp about an inch apart if you so wish. 
it just helps you and again I'm going to do it from this angle because I, I cannot do these backwards we come from the corner and we aim for this dot and we want to go up and over the top of your circle around over the top And you can do these as far apart as you want. So we've come to our border here and I've already drawn in the three designs. And I'm going to start with the figure eights. Over the top around it's over the top of our circle as I'm sewing it in I can see that I'm not matching the drawing but that's fine I just need it I just needed that for the guidelines. Look over the top and around. So we keep going this way along our border until we get to the end. And this is a nice little filler. Very nice for doing borders. I'm just coming down this side roughly so that you can see where that where we begin. And I'm going to set over to where we have feathers. And we're going to do these exactly like we've shown in the video where we're going to go half a bird swing and around the sun half a bird swing and around the sun I mean obviously you're going to have a line up here you're going to have drawn your your edging in or you will have stitched it would be the edge of your border and we just keep going up very gently, half a bird swing around the sun and back to the centre. I find this design very relaxing. And if you've not done much on feathers, this is great practice. These ones we won't fill in. Very good practice if you're going to do the large border that complements these narrow ones. I always want to come down the centre and bring it home as we say. I don't leave it hanging in the air. I mean don't just stop here. Bring it right the way down. Bed it in. Now 
and as we get to the top we're just going to bring it all the way down to the bottom and then we're going to come across now and we're going to do the last one and we're going to do it so that it complements these stripe these echoing in the straight lines that we have going round our border so again you will have got in your two edges in fact I'll, I will run up and down these bring it across and we're going to go across up to the next line and back down again traveling on your seam line you can do this with the border sorry you can do this with a ruler or you can do it as I'm doing it trying to show you that you don't need a ruler although using a ruler will give you a much more precise finish and do know lots of you don't have rulers so now you can see it beginning to form we do need to come back all the way down here because I need to come to this stage so back you can come straight across again if you want take your time, no race so you can see we're going this way that way and that way which will complement this although when you were doing it in your own quilt you would not put this border next to this you would choose one or the other and because it clashes a bit to be honest and you keep continuing across till we get to the very end like I have said actually using a ruler it's far better for so being precise but I do realise that some of you have not got that far in your printing world yet you can also space this by echoing from the last line I'll put the last one in now. So there we have our three borders. That will complement this wider border so I hope you will have a go at these 
if you're not intermediate to advanced you may just want to do these but these will actually build up and allow you to attempt this there's no difference in it we've still got straight lines we've still got feathers and we've got circles it's just a way of learning to build up mm -hmm. 